Good afternoon from College Park. It is Trip Talk Tuesday. Joining us today, special guest Dave Preston from WTO. What an honor. I know. Well, I'm, I'm going to blush. <laughs> That's Bruce Posner. I'm Wayne Viner. And it is Penn State Week, which is uh, my most hated rival. I think even more than Duke in basketball. Mm. No, that was a long time ago. Bruce, I'm going to throw it to you. What's your feeling? Does it matter that we're still rivals with Penn State if we ever really were? Viner Forgates makes your company work. Make your company work with hybrid solutions from Microsoft and Nextiva. Well, you know, why at the press conference today, and I'll, I'll harken back to uh, Ralph on Saturday, and Ralph made a point of saying that he had to convince his team that they can beat anybody. <laughs> all right, yeah. and do you guys have that feeling that Talia? and Rakim, who are the main characters there, and Jacorian, have that confidence that they can beat Penn State. I think they do because they beat Penn State at Penn State last year. Granted, it was the pandemic. You throw a lot of things out with just the oddness that was 2020. But the fact that they were able to beat Penn State on the road has to give them certain mojo this year. We talked about Penn State being just a hated uh, foe for Maryland. And for fans of a certain age, I, was, I, I, wasn't, uh, I did not grow up in the area, but following college football as a kid, it felt like every year from 82 to 86, Penn State won two national championships, they were unbeaten entering the Orange Bowl in a third, and they would have these nail-biting victories over the likes of Syracuse and Maryland. It, they won 17-15 or 24-20, and Maryland in that era, during the Bobby Ross era, they would lose to Michigan by you know two or three, they'd lose to, they, they would have just, they'd finish nine and three or 10 and two, and they'd have two losses against you know the elite, and that just kept them behind it. It had to be very frustrating in that area. I think in order for Maryland under coach Mike Loxley to take the next step to be not necessarily a, an elite team in the Big Ten East because that's Ohio State, that's Michigan, but to be a contender. If you want Maryland to be successful in the Big Ten East, you got to beat Penn State every so often, and this is a perfect well, opportunity you be, to do you, so. you got Penn State, Michigan, and yeah. Michigan State, Wayne. To, to me, it's crucial. How crucial is it to you? that they have to win one of these games. Well, I'm not they saying all three. They have to win one. They can beat Rutgers and it still works out for me. But you, oh, I, I just mean, want to beat I mean State. mentally, but I mean mentally. Don't get blown out. I've said right. that. We've been doing this for years. I keep saying you can play this game. Maybe you don't win it, but my God, you can't lose 56-3 to three again. Two years ago, they lost 59 nothing on Friday night. And it was one of those, oh my goodness, this is going to be a long season no, this type is, of games. This, that game, after that game, that you said to yourself, one. Are we ever going to beat this team? Now, we beat them last year with quotes on it because of the pandemic. You have to put them on. But still, we beat them. But in other words, to, to make a step in the Big Ten East, which we haven't, we, we really haven't done it yet. No. All right. You have to win one of these games. Two keys, I think. Uh, and I two, think it's yeah. possible. Yeah. I'm not saying it can't happen. I think if right. Illinois can go to Penn State mm -hmm. and beat them, or play them even, okay? Why can't Maryland? It's the transitive property of college football that doesn't always compute, but a 20 to 17 Maryland win there, and then an Illinois 20 to 18 win at Happy Valley. I think one of the keys is defensively, they can't allow those explosive plays. I think it the explosive plays first really showed up in that win over Kent State, and it wasn't an issue because it was Kent State, but against Iowa, against Ohio State, even against Indiana, a game that they won, you can't win against the very good teams in the Big Ten East if you're allowing plays of 20, 30 yards, uh, uh, that near interception that wanted going right. for 41 yards. Right. They can't do that this Saturday if Maryland wants to now, win. If you wanted to take go back and look at Indiana, it's a much different game. Mm -hmm. I think Mosley had a near pick yes. that the safety hit away from him about the 15-yard line, and the Jacorian Bennett has one go, a miracle play that you couldn't replicate if you wanted to goes through his hands. Indiana catches it. You catch your Maryland defense catches those two plays. Maryland wins 52 to 20. And it's one of those things that it's easy to say, "Hey, let's stop allowing these big plays." But it's another thing to actually go out and do it. And 
I don't think that the Maryland defense this year has the personnel to do that. They're still putting a lot of band-aids and duct tape and paper clips together. Maybe but they've got to be yeah, but they've got to be able to make those plays this Saturday. We're far enough we are far enough into the season where okay, what you saw on day one, that's not going to work. They need to come up with a good defensive well, game plan. Before we Saturday. go to Bruce, okay. let me just say on day one, when they had Deontay Banks and yes. Bennett's hand wasn't broken, and they had a rush end, and the linebackers were in one piece, that defense probably was okay. The thing with Maryland, and it's been true for years and years and years, is some of these teams have 80 guys that can actually play D1 football, and when they get injured, there's <laughs> another guy that steps in. Maryland, no matter how many recruiting classes right. we've been through, it seems like they have one or two injuries, and you say, well, we're playing a walk-on, or we're playing yeah. a guy that's but never played Except before. at the reception position. Receiver position. I think, well, since DJ Moore the, and, and even before, uh, Stefan Diggs, this has been a cradle of receivers the last decade plus. Two points to make. Number one, Dave brought up a great point. The guy, the coach of uh, Kent State, I forgot his name, but really well known guy, he was able to see some flaw in the defensive secondary that nobody saw before him. The West Virginia coach didn't right. see it. Nobody saw it who we had played, all right? He saw it, and it's been exploited. Last week was much better. You can't worry about that one last play. The game was over. It didn't matter. But there's something there. Can this kid Clifford exploit that? I don't know. If he's in one piece. Yeah, that's the big thing. And that's why you know, injuries are so key, especially at uh, pivotal positions like quarterback where and we've seen it here where Maryland has trotted out multiple guys every year for the most part even last year Talia was healthy but COVID-19 and they had to start a work. second okay. guy I think can Maryland run the football effectively this Saturday I don't think they can I think they got the, the fact that they were able to run for the yardage they did in the fourth quarter and that clock killing drive was an achievement in and of itself because other than that they weren't getting a push 90, at all. How many plays? Have we, 96 plays? 96 plays. And the last 20 of those, Indiana was a little bit gassed. And right. Maryland imposes their will. Uh, but the funny thing about how great a recruiter uh, our friend up north is, Mr. Franklin, the one recruit he needed was his own guy, Will Levis, yeah. who goes to Kentucky. If he keeps his two quarterbacks, they probably – or they could be undefeated. But nobody point. can keep two quarterbacks anymore. No, well, you can't. No, you well, can't. not I mean, not, not with the transfer the portal the way I it know. is. Unless you have a guy. The only way that you can do it is if you have a guy two years younger, and he knows as a freshman, okay, He's really Bruce shot. is going to the NFL the next year, and I'm gonna just sit and wait. And oh, if he gets hurt, I'm gonna transfer them. No, well, you're. This is going. Yeah, I, <laughs> all right. So right now, should I, I'm gonna give you my own opinion. <laughs> really? really? You start yeah, now. No. First time for anything. <laughs> the yeah, max everything. that Maryland can have in this game Saturday, yeah. if they're going to win, the max is one turnover, one turnover, and three penalties. I think Ooh. that's a lot to ask, and it's a lot to ask to win. But that's it. That's the most they can have. If it gets worse than that, it could get bad. Penn State's a ten-point favorite, and most people think they harken back to two years ago. This place is going to be 50-50, right or wrong. Right. I have State and Maryland. Maybe worse. Chance, yes. Maybe worse. It so, should be a whiteout. Why don't they do a whiteout? Because then will they know if Penn State wears their white? Last uh, thing I want to talk about. <laughs> so Maryland right now, I don't know if you guys read it. I read it every week. Projections. Yes. You ready? Yeah. What is it called? The it, Mortgage it, Chase Bowl uh, in the Phoenix? Oh, well, that, hey, that's, that's not the bad. Bowl right I heard, now. I heard Penn State Bowl versus Virginia. So. Wow, that'd be something. Well, I saw it yesterday, so it could be another one. Yeah, that's a dry heat out there, too. It's really not that. Phoenix, Phoenix, where my brother-in-law lives, right. so I'm in. Uh, Phoenix against West Virginia again. That makes some sense to me, but they do it all the time. They did in the Gator Bowl way back when, and they actually drew and they really well. Price. They paid your price for putting them again. <laughs> so since we're talking about a win on the way out, I think that'll do it for Turf Talk Tuesday. Uh, but since you're telling the truth now, Maryland going to win on Saturday? Oh, uh, no. I don't think they do. I think they have problem running the football, and I think that uh, with Penn State defensively, the way they attack the line of scrimmage, Talia is going to have a lot of those short fluff passes, and then eventually the, he's he's going to get frustrated and try to put one where he shouldn't, like we saw against it, Iowa. Exactly. They're going to play him inside yeah. out and wait for him to try and go to the small window. We've got one thing working yeah. for us, so, though. Okay, 
I don't know if you guys feel this, but to me, it feels like Franklin's mind is already on the West Coast. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have that California feeling? dream in such right. a rainy oh, day. Yeah. Do you, you said it first. I did. I said once yeah. he fired his agent, I think he's looking at another job. Why would you fire your agent in the middle of the season when you're in a contract if you weren't looking to do something else? It makes no sense. I will make the case for USC being a better job than Penn State. One, you're in the Pac-12 South. Mm -hmm. You don't play Michigan and Ohio State and even Michigan State every year, and you have a chance to win. And, and if you're very good, the fan base, unlike LSU, who expects you to go 13-0 and every year when you only have a 12-game regular season. Yeah. There's more job security there, too. And he's at the stage of his career where he's moved around enough. This would be a great landing spot for him, but until he moves. This is going to surprise you. You think he stays? I spent a lot of time in California, in Los Angeles. My son lived in Santa Monica for a few years. Uh, we had a business in Los Angeles. I can see what the tan lines. Where are you right? going with this? Yeah, keep you, going. Let, let me go. Let me go. I've spent time there. Right. I know it. You ready? I'm ready? The number one job in Los Angeles is not the coach of the Lakers. It's not the coach of the uh, Angels or the Dodgers. It's not the coach of the Los Angeles Kings. Major League it's Soccer the team? Coach of USC. Yeah. That's the number one job, and wherever that guy goes, he's revered. You know who told me that? Matt Weiner. No. Uh, I think. John McKay? Who's the coach of Seattle? Pete Carroll. Carroll. He told me that personally. He said it's the most prestigious wow. job that you could have, all right, in sports because you're the king of LA when you coach when you coach USC. Why? I don't know. I have no idea. Camera's over there. I, I have no idea. But listen, I've seen it. Well, right now he's got to win. You know, I, you know Franklin, if, if, if Penn State loses this Saturday, granted he's got, if, if he is in contention for the job. If he loses job, Saturday. It's five if, and four. Okay, if he loses Saturday. The faithful does The guys are going to drop yeah, on him yeah. right or wrong. Let's, if he's five and four, he's on the hot seat. He's on the hot seat if they lose a fourth straight game. He's on his own hot seat. He's they're, never getting. They're five and three, and they're having a horrible year. Right. Maryland's five and three, going on. Oh well, I said that the last today. I said they're five and three. We're five and three. Yeah. yeah. They they lost to Illinois. We beat Illinois. Yeah. They lost to Ohio State. We lost to Ohio State. What have they done? They beat who? They beat. In the conference, they Wisconsin. Beat Wisconsin, Wisconsin at to the start time, this season, yeah. At the time, very marginal. They beat Ball State, well, I believe, too. Well, oh, well. We're, we're going long in our segment as always. All right. I thought and you were no, going short, but no. Yeah, we're going I said long. I promised yeah. him five minutes. No, we're, no. I think I, I think this is a I think this is a game where uh, Penn State wins by two touchdowns, and they're able to grind it out. You know, in the end, uh, I, I see a valiant effort. I see. A, a lot of hearts left on the field this Saturday, but I just see Penn State being too good on both sides of the ball. I've Leah, Leah, I think it's how Leah can deal with the pressure and what happens. And I've said it before: turnovers, penalties. They got to avoid mistakes. I think, make, yeah. make Clifford beat you the right way by scoring, not giving him points. I think if he's got Demas and he's got Jay Sean Jones on this field Saturday, Maryland wins. I think without those guys, without a running a game, good, good he's got some good receivers when they're at their best, but they're not guys who can beat Penn State. Who was quarterbacking so. against Illinois when they had nine chances to put the game away and they couldn't do it? Sean, I can't remember his last name. Clifford? That's it. Clayton. I, I say no more. And that's a, it can yeah, happen. It can happen, but I've seen this movie 27, too many times. 27. 24, we're on the wrong side, I'm afraid. Okay, but I think it's going to be a hell of a game. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't even it, Leah. I'm a Leah guy. I, then I got to go with 50 to three. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's good. That, that covers the gamut there. All right, all right. Thanks, Thanks for having me alongside, gentlemen. Always. It's been a great seat. And, and where can they see you? I know you do a thing with Scott Abraham. Uh, yes, I'm on uh, often. I'm not on this week, but uh, WTOP.com and uh, 103.5 FM WTOP. I'm on uh, afternoon drive usually and uh, write about college football, college basketball. I actually vote in the AP Top 25. So really? May I say hoops. one other thing? Play-by-play -play guy yeah. for Maryland Women's Baseball. Maryland Women's, Women's yes. Matt Noble and I broadcast the game. Right. So Excellent. we've got a busy, busy winter ahead. Should and he be promised me to do some Zooms after those games. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, that's good. Add to TurpTalk.com. Yes. You Thanks for having me, gentlemen. Bruce and I on 1300 The Bet in Baltimore.
Wednesday night for Turp Talk and often well, you can see Bruce every Saturday with Sports Maven. Sometimes I drop in, I think for getting ready for Penn State, it might be a good day to drop You're in. You're in if you want. All right, good afternoon from College Park.